The decision to go and save the Laurel Days from this dream was not a decision that we took lightly. Because of how few of these individuals are left in the wild, each individual has so much importance. No member of our crew took that lightly. When we got to the site on the day of the rescue, I was pretty shocked by how much it had changed within about a month since I had last seen it. The pools were all very disconnected from each other. There was no flow between any of those pools and you could tell that the water had been stagnant for quite a while. And so I was definitely concerned and I was really thankful that we had chosen to take action when we did. When we saw the conditions that the Laurel Dace were living in, we were not comfortable leaving an extremely endangered species to try to survive this event on its own. We consulted with our partners at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, as well as the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency, and collectively this group made a decision that it was time to rescue the Laurel Dace from the drought. This is not a decision that's ever made lightly. It's uh, extremely alarming when you're a conservation biologist because you're working with these critically endangered species, which is kind of like having a patient who's in the ICU. You have to really carefully weigh out the risks of leaving this species to try to survive this event on its own in the wild versus giving them a helping hand and bringing them back into human care, but exposing them to some different risks. We knew that it was likely until about November where we would see significant rainfall back in these streams. What really weighs heavily on us is knowing that how critically endangered the Laurel Dace is means that inaction could have led to the permanent extinction of this species. Because the conditions in the wild were so dire for these fish, we, we had concerns that some of the individuals would not survive transport back to Tennessee, and we were prepared to handle that. Remarkably, we did not lose any individuals during transport back to Tennessee. The success of the fish is really a testament to the expertise that we have here taking care of those individuals. And so now, the Laurel Days are doing great. They almost seemed relieved to have, you know, fresh, clean water and plentiful food sources that they probably weren't getting in the wild during the drought. We're hoping that by November it has rained enough, that those streams have connected pools with good flow and good oxygen that will allow us to be comfortable putting the Laurel Days back into their wild home. As a recovery biologist, I work pretty, pretty strictly with threatened and endangered and imperiled fishes. And there can sometimes be this hopelessness that surrounds my job where it feels like all of these species are at risk and it all feels big and heavy. But in order to kind of thrive in this job, you have to be the eternal optimist. Days like the day when we get to bring the Laurel Days back to the stream are the days that kind of keep us going. We get to actually bring this fish back and feel the success of actually saving this fish from something that could have caused the extinction of it. And we get to feel the joy that comes to us from releasing them successfully back into the wild and saving them for another year.